I'm sure most of you aren't aware because this is something that occurred in my little, um, you know, uh, orbit of DJ stuff and nightlife things, whatever it may be. But Gordo, formerly known as Carnage, has been a bit of hot water on social media these days um, because he refused to end his set at London nightclub. Uh, what was it at? Was it uh, Ministry of Sound? That's it, Ministry of Sound. So the DJ who was meant to play the end set or the set after him, I'm not sure it's the end one, um, basically couldn't play because Gordo refused to come off the decks, which is an interesting story because I think I covered something similar um, that occurred with the Blessed Madonna at a Fred Again event. Um, this DJ called Bambi, who I'm not really too familiar with, but a lot of people um, you know, have known her who kind of commented on my video that I put out before about it. Uh, basically, she was booked to play the closing set of a kind of headline Blessed Madonna set and Fred Again. Um, she arrived at the venue on time for set was meant to be at 3 a.m. I think to four or something like that. Um, she gets to the booth and essentially, you know, bless Madonna basically ignores her and doesn't let her get on. She then talks to the manager. The manager says, "Wait." Then she confirms with the club it's meant to be 3 a.m. and essentially there's loads of back and forth. But essentially she gets, you know, told to chill and then she ends up only playing for 45 minutes just towards the end and not a full hour, which obviously is disappointing when you've travelled an hour there when you've had your friends or maybe fans come out to come and see you and then you get to play a 45 minute set. It can kind of, you know, it can kind of be a bit of a bummer, especially off the back of that lady too, being a black woman, being a young black woman too in the industry. You can only imagine the stuff that she's had to put up with on a kind of daily or monthly, weekly basis whenever she's out on the road. Now she attributed it straight away to racism, which I didn't agree with at the time, and I got a lot of stick from it. I remember when I did mention it, um, because you know, d these days the easiest thing to do when there are kind of um, occurrences of inequality or occurrences of you know unfairness is to point the finger at racism because it kind of just encapsulates and explains everything. But I think, especially when it comes to stuff concerning the entertainment industry, especially when it comes to stuff concerning nightlife and club culture and DJs and all that sort of stuff, I think for the most place, for the most part, um, you shouldn't attribute racism to it. You should just attribute cuntiness. Because I think I've been around long enough, and I'm sure some of you guys have been around long enough too, to know that there's a lot of cunts in this scene, a lot of them, whether they're male, whether they're female, whether they're men, whether they're women, whether they're trans, whether they're gay, whether they're whatever, whether they're black, white, Asian, there's a lot of cunts. They exist on every um, sort of level of the scene, unfortunately. And for me, I've always been a weird idealist when it comes to this sort of stuff. I've kind of always thought to myself, like, why don't we try to create our own version of a utopia in this little nightlife, little bubble that we have, right? And um, why don't we try to kind of create what we'd love to see in the wider world? But obviously it doesn't happen because mainly my kind of thing is why it doesn't happen is because it's nightlife stuff. And nightlife Life generally tends to attract the more um, deplorable people um, out there, right? Um, a lot of kind of freak shit happens at night, so it's kind of hard to create a utopia amongst all this sort of like devilish sort of energy. So that might explain it, but it is a bit of a shame it doesn't happen. And I think this is a good example of it being more so an issue of cunts, let's just do a racism. Because Gordo, from what I can see, is a black man. Maybe he's, you know, maybe he's flipping the, um, what do you call it? Maybe he's of um south american central american descent or something but he clearly looks like he would be someone you would describe as black and he obviously was big timing two prominent quote-unquote um white djs so this is a clear difference in this sort of paradigm but also shows you that clearly this is a more of an issue of cunts and less of an issue of racism and um when it comes to this sort of issue first off my initial reaction would be hey why not, right? Why not have a black guy, a DJ, big time a couple of white dudes at a flipping party? Because essentially we are the creators of this industry. Well, we are the creators of this music, right? Um, maybe not the scene. Um, we birthed it, but essentially we're not really proportionally represented when it comes to DJs on lineups and whatnot. Um, I know for myself how difficult it's been to kind of, you know, get put on certain lineups or play at certain places, mainly because I'm not really that well known and also because, you know, maybe I just don't look the part, whoever it may be. But it is kind of startling to see the disparity, especially when you consider the people that go to these events and also the where the music actually come from. So a part of me is like, yeah, go on, Gordo, stick it to these two white devils, isn't it? And let them kind of sit out and not play their set and just kind of big time them and over overplay until the very end, until those guys leave in it. Fuck it, why not? But then the other side of me also thinks what how, how I would feel if I was going to play at venue. I was all excited. I got myself prepped. I spent a week or the month 
month before prepping my USBs, putting my playlist together, tagging everything correctly, um, you know, bringing, packing my stuff, traveling to the venue, whether it's in my car or driving or flying there, really amped and excited to go, doing all the promo bits and the lame social media stuff on social media and get myself amped. And then I get there and the DJ ahead of me just doesn't want to come off the decks. Not for any other reasons, though, because they're just loving the attention and they don't want to share the limelight with anybody else. That just goes against everything kind of club culture sort of stands for and what kind of DJ culture stands for. So that's the part of me that kind of thinks, you know what, that was a real cunty move regardless, right? So let's kind of, um, you know, go ahead and sort of like roughly put or get together the timeline. So this is courtesy of Business Techno, of course, who covered this story pretty well. And this is a DJ called Waze who posted the following thing on Instagram has or well, posted the following thing on Twitter, but obviously um business has not posted on Instagram. It says as follows. Has anyone ever turned up for a gig where the headline act has decided they're going to stay on the decks and not allow any of the other acts book to play? I say yes, that's happened to me a couple of times. Um usually it's it's usually like somebody who I would say uh it usually happens at I wouldn't say even big artists. I've 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 played in flipping crappy sort of like you know friends recommendation warehouse parties and had somebody do the same thing just just didn't want to come off the decks was feeling it too much um and just basically aired everybody until the point where someone had to essentially like pull out a cord then he sort of like kind of paid attention and we kind of finally got on with the decks um but it's happened across the board it happens with big time djs you want to big time you and sun you and it also happens with people in warehouse parties who just are feeling the vibe feeling the love haven't played out forever and just want to keep going and going and going Another one it says headline DJ refused to come after last last night. I I love that even in this world, similar to how there is you know in other industries, people are afraid to put a name on it. I don't really know why because it's not as if DJ Carnage's people are going to prevent this Wade guy from getting any gigs. You assume so, right? I don't even think they even operate in the same sort of stratosphere because it sounds like a weird booking to have them alongside each other. Maybe I'm not getting it. Maybe they are all kind of business techno tech house type of people. But it's strange that he would even be that you know scared not to kind of put a name on it because why not because we all find out anyway but anyway it doesn't matter headline dj refused to come off last night and the two acts after him me and another dj lost our sets <laughs> i'm over a decade play. it must it's probably hard to take on my level right but it must be even difficult to take on somebody at this level right where you've been nominated for stuff you tour the world you go to festivals you get interviewed by radio and you're on magazines and shit and then some other guy basically just says now nah, you're not coming on it must be a real humbling experience like you know no matter how big you get there's always somebody bigger than you that can put you in your place <laughs> it's absolutely brutal this industry honestly it continues i'm over a decade of playing i've honestly never seen this level of entitlement or arrogance and i've dj'd with way bigger and better artists oh little diss there at the end cheeky he still didn't put a name on it so you know it's still a bit pussy to me but anyway it continues i've um i felt for the artist li liaison and no blame their way but what a bizarre situation to be placed in said artist didn't even acknowledge me just told the artist liaison i'm not fucking coming off <laughs> proper evil bde energy in it evil DJ BDE energy it continues um, at the start of this I just wanted to really explain someone had texted me why I wasn't playing when I was meant to be and the fact that it wasn't me playing tape the top 40 tech house 4 to 5 a.m. it's hard you know what to be honest like it's hard to throw an insult at somebody who's playing ahead of you who's playing shitty music when you're also on the same lineup as them because usually you would imagine if you're on the same lineup with a terrible dj it probably means that you're probably part of the terrible music that they're putting out you're in that same sort of scene right i'd imagine it's very rare i'd assume where you'd see fucking ricardo villa lobos playing alongside i don't know michael bibby or something right i don't think so those, those things happen um usually if you're on those lineups you're there because you are adjacent to that scene you're part of it too um so yeah it's funny that he kind of throw that little insult in there regardless but um obviously the reaction from the people on techno tour has been vicious everyone's kind of been going for him annabella ross posted this pretty funny oh someone like under annabella ross posted this pretty funny clip of um gordo playing at this place called cub space and i guess feeling himself with gum fingers or whatever and i don't know what what he's doing here why this makes any sense why he decided to do it who knows <laughs> 
okay cool and then of course underneath that they're just absolutely ripping into him so it's been pretty funny to see that kind of um transpire overall proper amateur don't he know that the mixer knobs are hot like lava while you're holding on to Twitter for too long taking a piss of the people at back clearly having fun and not having fun and just a lot of kind of you know comments that you would think would be attributed to this sort of stuff right and like I said prior, I think this is a clear demonstration of what I said beforehand regarding the Blessed Madonna situation and uh, the, that lady called Bambi, who unfortunately was, you know, made to wait for ages before she was able to play, wasn't really a case of racism and more so a case of a DJ just being a pure and utter cunt. Because for the most part, all of us had to start from the same place. Unless you were somebody that got grandfathered in, your, your, you know, whatever it may be, or you got brought in, I don't know, spent advised your dad or something. For the most part, every DJ under the sun has had to play horrible hotel lounge bar gigs horrible pub gigs horrible club gigs where no one turns up like just terrible shit right and you kind of slowly but surely you know keep, keep you know you, you remain persistent you remain consistent and you just keep building and then hopefully you get to the point where you can actually play the place that you do enjoy to play at but you always remember where you came from so sometimes when you do go to a hotel lobby and you see some guy in the corner playing disco at flipping 4 p.m in the afternoon you know exactly how he he or she feels and you can kind of emote to it and you kind of be a bit more um forgiving to them if they you know if they look bored or whatever it may be or you might even have a chat with them because you know how they feel and what that situation is like but when people like this act like where they are, it kind of just puts a bit of a sour taste in your mouth. I mean, there are DJs out there who are that kind of up their own ass. They kind of makes you feel a bit horrendous about it. But it's just funny to see all these clips. And obviously the, the, the flipping Jesus Christ fucking post, hands out wide, bow in front of me. I am the DJ God. Me playing other people's music really loudly in the club means that you have to kiss my feet and honor me like I'm a fucking deity or something, right? So obviously uh, people are absolutely going for him. But something you know a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth is the fact that i don't feel like the blessed madonna got the same level of attention and i think some people have mentioned it so it's a bit you know harsh to see that maybe it's because in general female djs aren't really as popular as male djs so the profile isn't as big so maybe the issue isn't you know if someone if a male dj does something like that maybe people won't really mind but i think back to what happened with peggy Goo and daniel wang and everyone was talking about that um but for the for some reason the annabella ross sorry the, the sorry annabella ross the flipping blessed madonna situation and bambi kind of went under the radar i think i might have been the only person that kind of covered it really in any detail on youtube at least and it kind of just kind of died and kind of went away um, but for the most part, everybody's kind of obviously going at this, right? You've got an outlet like um, your EDM obviously covering it. And then of course, I've got this place called The Song Kick. If I go backwards um, and go a list of other news outlets, I'm sure I could see other people too that covered it. Let me see if I can get it up on here. Maybe it's on here. There we go. If you do a Google search, you can see many, many places that also covered the same sort of thing, right? Um, let's see if I can get on a new source. Yeah, see? You got a place called Weave Ray View. Um, you got yeah, many other places have kind of covered it, right? And Ministry of Sound have covered it, and other places too. So it's clearly kind of caught wind uh, for some reason, you know, vis a vis what happened with um, what you call it, Bambi Plus Madonna. 